Am I the a-hole stories? Am I the a-hole for refusing to babysit my father's kids? I, 20 female, live with two roommates and currently am not working or in school, because where I work has not resumed yet since COVID. We are getting paid though. I do have income coming in from my employer so rent is no big deal. My father, who I'm estranged from, reached out via social media and also via other family to ask me to babysit my half-siblings, since he and his wife are back at work now. My father and I are estranged because after my mom died when I was seven, he gave me five new moms in quick succession before the sixth one actually married him when I was ten. Every single woman he dated he introduced to me, and told me they would be my new mom. He spent those three years dating non-stop and looking for someone else to take my mom's place. He found someone more than willing, but it left me feeling pretty damn abandoned and angry that he thought he could just replace her for me. Then he didn't like how I was not going to call her mom or go along with what he wanted, which he told me was selfish and bratty, and how I was out to ruin everything for them. They had two kids together while I still lived there and might have more, I'm not sure. I went to my grandparents for a few months before I turned 18, and then I moved in with friends. I have not spoken to him or seen him in three years. No contact at all. Until he reached out. I told him no. I told him not to ask again. My grandparents told me they understand why I don't want to help him but I should see it as a chance to get to know the kids. And that I should want that because regardless, we are related through blood. I honestly have no interest but maybe that makes me a jerk. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. The whole backstory aside, he comes nagging on you after three years of silence because he needs a free babysitter? That's a horrible way to initiate contact again regardless of the circumstances. Whether or not you want a relationship with your siblings is up to you, but that should be done in small, controlled situations, not in a commitment to babysit them for however long they need. Not the a-hole. Whether you choose to have a personal relationship is your choice, you are an adult. It sounds like you both went through some crap after losing your mom, grief sucks, I'm sorry. But he shouldn't be trying to reconnect with you for his own gain. He should want to naturally as your parent. As for your other siblings, again completely up to you if you want to get to know them or not. Your father should let you do this on your terms though. I don't think he is actually trying to reconnect with OP though. I think he just needs a babysitter and figured why not ask OP to do it for free? I mean he obviously knew how to get in touch with her all of this time if he had wanted to reconnect with her. But, it wasn't until her needed something that he even bothered to reach out. I'm pretty sure that if the guilt tripping doesn't work, he will go back to being silent once he finds a different babysitter. Not the a-hole. It seems so strange that after going no contact, he breaks the ice with such a big ask. Your story broke my heart though. Was he just floundering in his grief thinking he needed to get you a replacement mom? Or did it come from his own need to be with someone? Now that you're older, are you interested in finding out why he did what he did, or are you just totally done and don't care? None of what I asked has anything to do with the question you asked. You are very very clearly not the A. I am totally done. He gave no crap about how I was doing. He wanted someone to be with who could be my new mom. He might have even wanted me out of his hair. It was all he cared about, finding someone new. I'm really sorry. That must have totally been heartbreaking for you. It was. I remember being really sick with the flu or something when I was 8 and he went out as normal for the 2 weeks while I was only wanting my dad to be there and look after me. I think I basically lived with my grandparents until I was better. Next story is titled. Am I the a-hole for proving my mom was being a hypocrite? My mom is very different with my sister, 16, and me, 15 female. My sister is a double D and has curves and a butt, and I'm a freaking rectangle and look like a 10 year old boy. Whenever my sister wears a v-neck or low cut shirt or shorts that don't go down to her fingertips, our mom calls her a hoe and trashy, and says that she needs to start respecting herself and not keep trying to get boys attention. I can wear whatever the hell I want and she won't give a damn. I bought a crop top that was barely longer than my bra and a skirt that barely covered my butt, and my mom complimented my outfit. Then my sister walked out in shorts and a t-shirt and my mom called her a slut. It's starting to get warm, so my sister and I started taking out our summer clothes a little early, and my mom has been on my sister's butt again. So my sister and I decided to go shopping and we bought the exact same shirt and shorts, flight my cropped pink short sleeve t-shirt and some regular black shorts, and agreed to wear them the next day to see what my mom would do. This morning, we walked out of our rooms and my mom complimented my outfit and said that I look cute 
and suggested a makeup look that I do a lot to match it. Then she looked at my sister and called her a slur and said nobody's going to respect her if she keeps showing off her body. My sister pointed out that I was wearing the same outfit, and my mom said, that can't be possible. Hers is so much less trashy, so my sister and I pulled out the receipts that showed that they were the same shirt and shorts. My mom stormed off and won't talk to us, and our dad thinks she deserved it, but we should apologize to keep the peace so we wanted to know if we were being a-holes. Not the a-hole, your mom's attitude is disgusting, and well done for sticking up for your sister. And tell your dad that if you apologize you will never have peace. She will continue to believe she's right. It depends how you approach this. If she only goes to apologize and doesn't get more into it, then yes. But in this case what they need to do is to sit down with the mother, and say why they did this and what they were trying to show. And have dad as a neutral moderator. Hopefully, by discussing this calmly and constructively, something can improve. Also, definitely not the a-hole. Dad is not a neutral moderator, he's a doormat. Absolutely not the a-hole and you are legends. Body type double standards are real and I hope your mom is mature enough to learn her lesson. Sadly, I get the impression from the silent treatment that she's childish in general, maybe a bit emotionally manipulative? And it's very uncool of your dad to put pressure on you to accept it. I wonder if anything on r slash raised by narcissists would resonate with you. Actualizing developed teens is such an issue. I hit puberty early and hard. It was so alienating to have to wear sports bras over my swimsuits at school functions, just because I had a bigger bust. Not the a-hole. Let me get this straight. Your mom is trying to keep your sister safe from actual harassment. By harassing her? Not to mention, this is a massive double standard. Your 16-year-old sister has a right to be comfortable, and if your mom wants to pretend that she's trying to communicate when she isn't, that sounds like mom's problem. And your dad's attitude is just appease the tyrant? WTF? Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my stepdaughter use my daughter's wedding dress? I'll try my best to explain the situation and make sure to present both sides. I, female 49, met my stepdaughter Zoe 2.5 years ago, and I married her father less than 5 months ago. It was a small and private celebration since that's what we felt was the best thing to do since I'm still grieving my daughter Lauren who passed away from sepsis at the age of 26. It was so sudden. She was doing okay and was getting ready for her wedding that was supposed to happen the same month she passed away. We still don't know what went wrong. We were devastated to say the least. Her fiancé had a hard time adapting to the new normal, cut I still have contact with him as we're very close. I took most of her belongings including her wedding dress. We bought it together and she put a lot of her touches on it. Worked hard on it. So although it hurt to look at it, I make sure it's safe. Now, Zoe's younger than Lauren. She's 23. We're not very close and distance is one of the reasons why, but we're very respectful towards each other. The issue started when Zoe visited to talk about her wedding in April. We were talking about wedding dresses and she suddenly brought up Lauren's wedding dress. I asked her what about it? And she said she saw it several times and it got stuck on her mind. Asked if she could see it, and I let her. She then said she'd like to wear it at her wedding. I felt uneasy, so I told her I wasn't sure that was a good idea. She told me it's fine, she'll have to change few things in it so it can fit her size and style. But this is why I had a hard time accepting. I told her I was sorry but I can't let her have it. She offered me money, but its sentimental value is what matters to me. She argued saying I was making things complicated and it was alright since she too is my daughter. She asked if I don't love her as much, so I told her my love for her is different but she threw a fit calling me unfair and unreasonable to still say no. Her dad got involved in the argument saying he doesn't see why I'm against it. I declined to discuss it anymore, but they kept bringing it up asking if my daughter would have wanted someone else to have the opportunity to wear this dress since she unfortunately couldn't. This made me so mad I lashed out at both of them and kept saying no. Others said that I had no right to act like that, leaving the dress in the closet when my stepdaughter can make good memories with it, but she said she's planning on changing its look. Now for the top comments. 100% not the a-hole, but everyone else in this story sure is. The fact that both your stepdaughter and your husband are continually guilting you after you have firmly said no is not just disrespectful, it's preying on your grief. I'm disgusted that any person who claims to love you would presume to tell you what your recently deceased daughter would want, also a girl can avoid having to look for another wedding dress. And the audacity to tell you that you are making things complicated. I'm infuriated for you. 
You're right about what you said. My husband said he thinks that Zoe's just trying to get close to me and bond with, and claims I'm not opening up to her. But the dress shouldn't be involved in my relationship with Zoe. I don't know why he refuses to see how unreasonable they are being. It's exhausting and I can't take any more guilt tripping. I know why. He doesn't respect your feelings, your boundaries or your grieving journey. I know everyone on this sub says we say to get out of there too fast. But I would ask them to go to family therapy with you ASAP. If they don't agree to give it a shot then I honestly would call the lawyer. This is a hill I would die on. Someone who loves you, will not hurt you like this. He's gonna steal that dress and give it to his daughter. OP you should store the dress somewhere else at least until the wedding is over. Not the a-hole. That dress is no longer just a dress, it is a sacred memory of your daughter. You really need to put it elsewhere, though. Because I wouldn't put it past your husband or his daughter to take it when you aren't around. I would also tell your husband that he needs to shut the hell up and be grateful he will get to see his daughter get married, and not have only a dress left to remind him of what should have been, that you would trade anything to have your daughter back, but since you can, you will hold on to every memory you have. I would also tell him if he ever goes up against you about anything regarding your daughter's memory again, you will be filing for divorce within 24 hours afterward. You are not the a-hole, and you keep the dress well hidden and safe. Otherwise you may find it missing or damaged, the fact no one else sees your sentimental value in it is disheartening. Stay strong. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents to back off and stop trying to get the cousins to meet? So my sister, 29 female, and I, 26 female, have never had a good relationship. If you ask me why? I could not tell you. All I know is we just never had what others would consider to be a good sibling relationship. I don't hate her, but I know she has no interest in us having a relationship and she is adamant our kids will never know each other. I actually never met her kids, nor got invited to her wedding, and she told our parents she won't show up to anything I'll be at. My parents attempted to convince her to let them facilitate a relationship between cousins, and she said no. She told them never, actually. Now they are trying to go behind their back and asking me to let them have my son when they see my sister's kids. I told them no. That I would not go along with that for many reasons, including it being wrong even if they don't like what she's doing and on top of it all I'd face more backlash than them since it's me she has a problem with. And I told them I didn't want to risk her taking it out on my son. They're saying I should want the cousins to know each other at the very least. I told them it's not important to me and I don't want to fight about it, but when they're older they can get to know each other when it's independent of us, and when hopefully my sister won't flip out over it. They're saying I'm being just as selfish as her. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You're respecting your sister's boundaries and protecting your son, so no way you're in the wrong here. I think that there's something you're not telling us about your relationship with your sister, but the point is that none of you want to have a relationship. Your parents are the a-holes for going behind your sister's back to do something that she does not want them to do. There's nothing to say. I honestly don't know why we're not close. My earliest memories of us, we're not close and I honestly don't know why. I'm not even sure she would know why. But it's how things worked out. She was three when you were born. She was the center of attention at a very impressionable age, then suddenly she was not any longer. Sometimes kids just can't handle the sibling taking away what they have. Not the a-hole. If both parties are not into it, this will make things worse. The only way it would work is if her and your kids would have liked to meet each other. You can't make them do that though. It will depend on them solely. Even then they would need to be old enough to have more say over my sister. Because she will not let her kids meet my son while she still has the power to say no. Not the a-hole for the specific question you asked, but I do wonder about the dynamics that produce this situation as it currently stands. Your parents are clearly not good at parenting, at a minimum, if they produce this dynamic between you two and are befuddled by it now, and if they think that pressuring you like this for the family is a good idea. And unless your sister has some kind of serious personality disorder, I do wonder at your assertion that she wants you specifically, unless that was more you, as in all three of you including your parents? To never ever meet her children. That kind of statement, that kind of boundary, is a really serious one that most people do not take lightly, I'm not going to assume that this is one of the totally outrageous people who are my way or the highway 100% of the time unless told otherwise. That suggests there are some seriously bigger issues at play than whether or not your kids play together. I would work on exploring and unpacking that with as much curiosity as you can manage, unless, of course, 
This has been her personality since day one, but even then, I'd wonder about the parental choices that influenced it. Yeah, this is the only relationship between us that I know. I do not remember anything different and I have no idea why it is this way. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.